to everyone. My name is Pearl Coupe, and today I want to be doing a little sharing on the issue of apostasy. Apostasy. And uh, I want to just delve into the Word of God and hear what the Lord is saying about apostasy and specifically the Word of God. What is it saying about apostasy? This is going to be a two-part series. So we're going to be looking at the definition of apostasy. What does apostasy mean? Uh, doing an etymology of the word. We're also going to be looking at who is an apostate? What are the signs or what are the characteristics of an apostate, somebody who has become an apostate? And we'll also be looking at the aspect of how do we respond to apostasy? What is the right response to apostasy? So starting off, first of all, in this first session, and I do encourage you also to, you know, listen to both parts so that you get the full or a more balanced um, understanding of what apostasy is and how we as the body of Christ are expected to respond to apostasy. So starting first and foremost with the definition of apostasy. What is apostasy? It's a big word and it's got a Greek foundation. Let's look at it and examine apostasy. And apostasy in simple language language in simple terms is departing from the faith. Somebody who is an apostate is somebody who once believed but has departed from the faith. And uh, if you read the Word of God, if you read the Bible, you will see examples of apostates, people who were once believers and they departed from the faith. And um, you'll, you'll know that even now, currently, as we speak right now, we are in one of the greatest seasons of apostasy. We are saying, seeing men and women of God departing from the faith in droves, in numbers. They're falling away from the faith. And it is important for us to recognize the signs of apostasy so that you and I know what they are and we disassociate ourselves from apostasy because the Bible tells us not to be involved and in fact it tells us to confront apostasy. So it's very important that we recognize the signs of apostasy. And I want to start off this teaching and this sharing with some scriptures, especially scriptures that we've taken from the New Testament, which is actually warning us that apostasy is, is coming. In fact, it's, it's been around for a long, long time. But the Bible tells us in the New Testament around and about the end times. And in Matthew 24, 5, it says this. The Lord said, many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. And um, it also says in Mark 13, 22, it says, in the same context, Yeshua said, and, and what's interesting is in both scriptures, it's Yeshua talking. So in the first scripture, Matthew 24, 5, it's Yeshua saying, many will come in my name, saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. So there are many people who will come in his name, using his name. So it's important that we understand that apostates still also have the ability to use the name of Yeshua, using the name of Christ, but they're not using the name of Christ to draw people to Christ, but rather to confuse people and to deceive people who are followers, imitators, and disciples of Christ. So both scriptures is actually Yeshua speaking Speaking and warning us. And we've read Matthew 24, 5, and in Matthew 13, 22, still Yeshua speaking, and he says, and he warns and says, false Christs and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. So it's very important that we understand that there will be false Christs and there will be false prophets that will be arising. And some of them will even show signs and wonders because some of us, you know, we get caught up 
in the fact that there are signs and wonders that are being shown. And some of us are moved by signs and wonders. And some of us even follow signs and wonders. But the Bible tells us not to follow signs and wonders. In fact, signs and wonders are supposed to follow you and I. And another scripture I'd love us to read just to set a foundation and create a foundation. The Bible says in Psalms 11, 3, you know that... Um, what can the righteous do if the foundations be destroyed? So foundations are very critical. Foundations are very important. We have to build on the right foundation. And the foundation that we use in teaching is the word of God. And so the third scripture I'd like us to read is 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3. And this is now Paul informing us. And he says that before the coming of Christ in glory will be a massive departure from the faith. From the faith, a massive departure. So Paul is merely emphasizing what Yeshua himself is saying that, you know, there will be a great falling away from the faith, a great departure from the faith. And in 2 Peter 3.3, 3, which is the last scripture that I'll read for this session, at least for this, this, this part of the session, is um, 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 3. Sorry, 2 Peter 3, verse 3, said that Peter said there will come in the last times scoffers abandoning the faith to pursue their own lusts. So here we've got four scriptures that we've read, Matthew 24, verse 5, Mark 13, verse 22, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, 2 Peter 3, 3, all of them warning about the end times, all of them warning that many will come in the last days and that there will be a falling away, all of them warning that some will say that they, they are coming in the name of Christ and will be coming for deception purposes to deceive, all of them warning that there will be a massive departure from the faith. So it's very important that we understand and that we understand that we are in these days and we are in these times. Second thing I want to say, as we are still sharing uh, on who is an apostate and what is apostasy, I also want to ma make this statement from the beginning to say that all apostates are false teachers, but not all false teachers are apostates. So all apostates are false teachers, but not all false teachers are apostates. So we need to understand this, um, that um, whenever you are an apostate or somebody's an apostate, they will always bring a false teaching. But not every false uh, teacher is an ap apostate because some false teachers were never believers from the beginning. And remember that we said that an apostate is somebody who once believed but has fallen away from believing, departed from the faith. And it's important that each and every one of us remain prayerful. We remain in the word of God so that we ourselves are not seduced, are not taken out of the faith. We must be grounded by the word. We must be grounded um, by the company that we keep. It's very important to keep the right company because the wrong company can, can operate to take you out of your faith. If you're listening to wrong teachings, if you're listening to um, wrong articulation of the gospel and people who are taking the word of God out of context, it can take you out of the faith and make you depart from the faith. And Hebrews 3.12 says this in encouraging us to do so. It says, so search your hearts every day, my brothers and sisters, and make sure that none of you has evil or unbelief hiding within you, for it will lead you astray and make you unresponsive to the living God to the living God. And again, Paul says in 1 Timothy 4, 1, the Holy Spirit has explicitly revealed at the end of this age, many will depart from the true faith one after another, devoting themselves to what? To spirits of deception and following demon-inspired revelations and theories and theories. So we've been talking about apostasy and an apostate, who is an apostate? An apostate is one who no longer walks with Yeshua HaMashiach, no longer walks with Christ. And in fact, if we do an etymology and study of the word um, apostasy, we will find in Greek the word episteme, episteme, which means to remove yourself from the position 
you originally occupied. So an apostate who originally was a believer now is somebody who's removed themselves from the position of believing, of being a believer. And another root word for apostasy also comes from the Greek word apostasia. Apostasia. And the word, if you do another study of the, the word apostasia, because the word etymology simply means to do an in-depth study. So if we do an etymology again of apostasy, we come to the word apostasia. It means defection. It means departure. It means revolt. And it also means rebellion. So in essence, an apostate is somebody who has defected from the faith, is somebody who has departed from the faith, is somebody who has revolted, and is somebody who has rebelled against the faith. So what I want to say is that apostasy is not by mistake, but apostasy is deliberate, it's purposeful, it's intentional. And an apostate is not somebody who is struggling or having doubt. An apostate is somebody who has intentionally departed from the faith. An apostate characterizes someone who deliberately abandons truth and gets into erroneous teaching. And the reason why they do that is to deliberately mislead um, those who are actually following their teachings. So as we've said, an apostate is one who has departed from the faith. They have departed from the body of, of Christian doctrine. Um, and an apostate is, is somebody who has now opened the door to seducing spirits. They've opened themselves up to spirits of deception. And in opening themselves up to spirits of deception, they also have purpose to deceive many others. So uh, I want to reiterate and emphasize that an apostate is not someone who never knew the truth, but they are someone who knew the truth and they rejected it. So in general terms, we can define apostasy as the abandonment or renunciation of a religious or political belief. And so if we also, um, you know, look at apostasy again, we can see in the Bible that it also talks about apostasy as sinfully, willfully, after we have received the knowledge of truth. So apostasy is somebody who willfully sins, and after they receive the knowledge of truth, they just abandon that truth. I love the Matthew Henry Bible com commentary. It puts it this way, and it, it, it explains apostasy in this way. It says, when men with a full and fixed will and resolution despise and reject Christ, the only savior, despise and resist the spirit, the only sanctifier, and despise and renounce the gospel, the only way of salvation and words of eternal life. And all this after they have known, owned and professed the Christian religion and continue to do so obstinately and maliciously. So this is an apostate, somebody with a full and fixed will, who is resolute and they have, you know, after having known Christ, despised and rejected him, despised and resisted the spirit. And they have done this after they have known and owned and professed Christianity or Yeshua HaMashiach and they do so obstinately and maliciously. So apostasy, uh, beloveds, is not to be taken lightly. It is a sin that is committed willingly. It is something that is committed repeatedly. It is a disowning of the truth and the source of the truth. One of the things I'd like to also address is the dangers of apostasy, the great dangers of apostasy. Now, for me, an apostate is actually, I think, almost worse than, you know, a false teacher. And I'll tell you why I say that. Because false teachers sometimes are easier to identify than apostates. Because the issue with apostates is this is somebody who once believed, this is somebody who was preaching powerfully, this is somebody who was actually, you know, really preaching the word of truth and the word of God, and people were being saved and being transformed by an uncompromised word of God. And then the apostate departs from the faith. That is where they become very dangerous, because you have known them previously to be people who preach the truth, to be people who teach the truth then it's easy um, to be taken in by 
what they say because you've been following their teachings maybe over years and you know that what they've been teaching is truth. And so it's important to keep checking on what people are preaching because it's possible for one to be a powerful teacher and believer and preacher of the word and in the coming years it's possible for somebody to have departed from the faith and they are no longer preaching the truth they have become apostate and they are deceiving many because of 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 the apostasy aspect of having known Christ that's what makes them more even more dangerous than false teachers these are people who once knew the Lord genuinely and they know the word of God. Another thing that makes them very dangerous is that they know the word of God. And so they mix the word of God with error. They mix truth with error to deceive and to confuse people. And, um, you know, uh, another thing that makes an apostate also more dangerous or very dangerous and more dangerous than the usual false teacher is that uh, this is somebody, you know, who, who has never known, has known God as opposed to the, the, the cult leader who has never known God. So it's so easy to identify somebody who doesn't know God. It's much easier to identify a cult leader who has just gotten in from the beginning. He never believed in God. He was just a deceiver. He was false. It is often easier to identify those than those who were actually genuine disciples of Christ. I, I want to go into this next few minutes as well, just to talk about maybe a few or one or two examples of apostasy that we may see in the Bible. And I think um, if we think about it, we'll, one of the first apostates that you and I will probably mention is Judas. We know that Judas was, was not only a believer, but Judas was a disciple. He was a follower of Christ. He was an imitator of Christ. He was a, he was a disciple of Christ, one of the inner circle who, who, you know, who had been under Christ's instruction and teachings. And, and, and this probably is one of the greatest um, examples of apostasy. Somebody who had, had followed him, had been in his presence, had been around him, and yet he fell away and he departed from the faith and he sold out Christ. He sold out Yeshua. But Judas is not the only example that we see of apostasy. We also read, you know, in 2 Chronicles, and if you read 2 Chronicles, especially chapter 25, it records the account of Amaziah, who was the king of Judah, and he was the son of Joash and the father of Uzziah, who was also king during the time of Isaiah the prophet. And Amaziah reigned in Jerusalem for 29 years. And this is what verse 2 of 2 Chronicles 25, verse 2 says this. It says, he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. Not with a perfect heart. So, you know, it tells us that Amaziah understood he understood the, 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 the aspect of, of the Lord's ways, of the kingdom ways. He understood it and he followed the ethics of it, but not with a willing heart. So his heart was not connected to it. And an apostate is easily recognizable by that, that they may know the teachings, but their heart are, their heart's not connected to the, the teachings. They are not living out the life. Of, of the teachings. They're not following the teachings, even though they know them. They have head knowledge. They have a theoretical understanding of the teachings, but they do not follow the teachings as a lifestyle. And if we read, um, we read uh, that scripture again, Second Chronicles 25, it'll tell us that as a, 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 a Amaziah did not have a personal relationship with the living God. And very soon we understood that it moved from not having a personal relationship with God to a place where now he now started to get involved in idolatry. He began to worship the gods of Edom and he, he began, bad, began to bow down to the gods of Edom and burn incest before them. That's verse 14. 2 Chronicles 25 verse 14 tells us that now he was worshiping the gods of Edom and we know that his life ended very tragically whereby he was actually murdered by his own people after he turned away from the Lord. I got to tell you 
um, for apostates, any apostate out there, my prayer is that you will repent and return back to God because it will not end well for you. It will not end well. You know, on Facebook, there's I've been seeing this phrase that keeps uh, coming up on Facebook and um, it's a phrase, popular phrase that has been made now popular in South Africa and people talk about it will end in tears. It will end in tears. I want to tell this and say this to every person who is either operating in apostasy now or considering departing from the faith, walking in rebellion, it will end in tears. It can never end well for you once you have known Christ, once you have known Yeshua, once you have known the living God and been in a relationship with him, it will never end well when you depart from the faith. And I know this from, you know, from, from, from watching so many people just departing and they their lives did not end well. And so I want to adjure you I want to, you know, just encourage you, do not even consider going into or entering into apostasy. It will not end well. It will end into te in tears. And so this, this is something that we, we, we really need to look at. Like I said, examples of apostates. We've looked at, at Amazia and we can see so many examples of apostates. And in the second um, session, please do uh, go into the second session. In the second session, like I said, I will be going into a teaching where I'll be talking about more about apostasy and some of the signs of apostasy that we see going on in today. And there are particular trends that we see that are happening uh, with regard to apostasy. So on this session, this was just meant to be an introductory session. I'm just going to um, wrap up and we're going to go into the next session. But this session was really just to lay a foundation to say, what is apostasy? What does it look like? Who is an apostate? Is that person who knew Yeshua, who had a personal relationship with Christ, who had revelation of his word, but that person has, has departed from the faith. And we went into that study. We, we understood what apostasia was and we understood the Greek etymology of the word apostasy. And we've understood also the dangers of the apostate how an apostate can actually be even more dangerous than a false teacher because this is somebody who understands the language, the language that the body of Christ speaks. This is somebody who understands the doctrine and they begin to mix error deliberately, intentionally, and purposefully, and they mix that with the intention to deceive. So God bless you. Um, please tune into the second session where I'm going to be teaching on how to identify an apostate, what are some of the signs of apostasy so that you and I will know what uh, what to look out for so that we don't get taken away. We're not deceived by apostates, by apostasies, and that the Lord will help us to stay rooted and grounded in Yeshua HaMashiach, and we will not depart from the faith, but we will run our race faithfully. We will run our race with purpose. We will run our faith uh, our race with faith and with consist consistency in the matchless name of Yeshua HaMashiach. God bless you. Do tune in to Apostasy Part 2 where I'm going to be talking about some of the signs of apostasy. And that's me for today. Tune in to Apostasy Part 2 so that we can learn together. God bless you.